what I've learned during all these years is that you are responsible for your life. No one else is. And you must wake up as soon as possible and go and take action. He was blown up in half. They tortured us for a few hours. Tarret in ena etroxuria. Fundamentally, the idea is to control female sexuality. Seeing yourself behind bars. It's the moment that you value your freedom. There was chance of that. I almost, I behöver frihet. Nu vet vilken frihet vi vi letar efter. The story I chose to believe back then was that the color of my skin made me different than everybody else and superior to everybody else. I, I, I thought I was substandard. I thought I wasn't. Um, I wasn't as, wasn't as good, or I would never be as clever as a um, as a white person. When you believe that story, waking up every day, it has a corresponding effect on your life and your relationship with the world around you, and it, it, it essentially destroys it. I remember having a a girlfriend for a short while. And when we finished our relationship, she said uh, she would have married me, although we were only young at the time, probably 17, but she said her dad wouldn't let me in the house because I was black. I was continuously say, saying no, no, but they were still forcing me that what people will say and by saying no, you're bringing shame to us. I am homophile. Just to say that I am homophile in front of a camera team, that I could not have done for a few years ago. I think it was very, very difficult. I was actually also really like, you know, pro-LGBT rights even. But I wasn't gay, you know? Både i islam og i den pakistanske kulturen så er dette veldig, veldig vanskelig og veldig, veldig på en måte sett ned på. It just felt too much, I guess, to to have to kind of defend my right to exist, I think. That it was about me and my right to exist as a person. Uh, jeg hadde så lyst til å være heterofil. Jeg ville gifte meg med en jente, og jeg ville få barn og leve heterolivet, A4-livet, og være mainstream, og ikke stikke meg ut. Men sånn gikk det ikke. As naive as I was, I just came, went to my family and I said, this is the guy I would like to get married to. And they said no, and I said yes. The more they said no, the more I say yes. You're like yes, because this is my right. As a matter of fact, my first year's university fees, my parents had to obtain a loan from a couple just across the road from where we stayed. Um, so it was very difficult. By the time I got to year two, you know, um, I was admitted into the law program. They were very exhausted. They had virtually nothing. When I got to year two, um, I did not register because I couldn't pay fees. And of course, in Africa, I don't know, this might be a challenge in almost every home. Going to school is, 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 is really tough. Getting the tuition, uh, I almost failed to go to the university because I wasn't sure of my university. But uh, during that time, I I had to look for my own tuition. It was really tough. All the time I think about you, you are a person who no one will do what you want. Stigma here is the fact that nobody talks to me the way they used to talk to me. And when you feel like you are a en del av den som funnet, hele som funnet for deg er en familie, som en foreldre.
So because they were, they were teachers and their salary is nothing to write home about, um, so we we were we barely had um, you know one cost meal per day. I have very very many young people with lots and lots of stories and uh, young people who came from homes that you you wouldn't believe. Because I was thinking about the next meal. I was thinking about transportation. I was thinking about electricity at home. I was thinking about how my parents could repay the loan. Politiet slo mig och slo med köller eh och detta var bambusstockar och det är jävla ont för att säga det milt. I go to the prisons quite often in Afghanistan. I really went a lot more back in the day. And I was wanting to see my client in the prison. As a lawyer, I have the right to see my client. And I remember my um, my translators and my driver were getting approached by various people to plan kidnapping me. Och de slog på armarna, så jag brukade armarna då till att beskydda huvudet. Och till slut blev det för mycket och det hjälpte inte att dra fram pressekortet och och se si att du var Norwegian Press. Det gav de blaffen i. Och de var ända mer hardhänt mot av dessa politiska aktivister. When I was arrested the government wouldn't they wouldn't let me out on bail. Um, they took my passport, but still said it's not enough to let me out on bail. Over 20 years, from the bottom to now, to the, almost to the top. Sometimes I say, I'd rather be at the bottom, <laughs> because I could still be with the people. I could, I'm, I would still be home today. I would be home rather than being in exile. I could be with the ashes of my husband who passed away two years ago. Now it's all back home. Seeing yourself behind bars, it's the moment that you value your freedom. We take for granted our freedom. My seven-year-old daughter looked at me and, and, she, and, um, and she said, I, uh, and I know that you're fighting some bad people, and I want you to know that I'm very proud of you. Seeing my uncle abuse my mother in front of me, and I always looked up at her as a very strong person, that invaded throughout my life, my sense of security, my sense of even dignity as a woman. Going through an FGM, female genital mutilation, at the age of seven. The idea, fundamentally, the idea is to control female sexuality. Seven-year-old held down by four adults. You can't move. I mean, you, I always say you lose a whole connection to the bottom part of your body. It felt like something left in this type three, which is total removal of the labia minora, labia major, clitoris and then they pulled the skin together, they stitch it all the way down. So that's what we had. My younger cousins were like three, four years old, having been cut, would come in into our room and all they've seen is these girls in these nice gowns, henna, with all these toys, everybody fussing over you. So what that three-year-old's thinking, wow, you know, I want the same thing. When I first got involved in this work, people keep using cultural practice and I said, it's actually abuse. That's how you abuse a child, you make them think it's okay. <laughs> yeah. They was putting me in front of the TV and show me porn. And then they said that when you start to work, then you just do the same, that's it. And I got picked up by the police um, van. And when I got picked up by the police van, I was terrified that um, you know I will go back to the same process of humiliation of somebody telling me you are a bad girl you, you've done something naughty you're gonna pay for it it's like I wish to be beaten before I'm sorry but uh, I changed my mind I uh, I am pregnant I want to have this kid I want to have another another life then they start to threat and uh, then they start to get violent and uh, and then they said that you will 
earn back all the money we have used on you. We don't care if you're pregnant or not, you will be going around with this big belly and you will earn money for us anyway. I det sista fängslet är man nöjd till att liksom överleva på en eller annan måte. De tar mig med mina tre kusiner till fängslet. Vi tortureras flera timmar. Man man hör det på folk som lider var dag, var timme, var sekund är folk som torturerat. Sen hänger de upp mig till taket, du vet. Det när händer bakom du hänger upp mig i taket lite där runt 10 cm från golvet. Och du vet direkt i första fem minuter då förlorar dina axlar. Du har inga känslor mer. Det bara du hör det allt. Och det bara jag känner att jag bara förlorar min kropp ju. I remember blood. I remember he had his son with him, uh, which was nine years old. He was blown up in half. I wasn't able to sleep because of the flashbacks. I also for quite a, a while couldn't um, get rid of the smell of blood and bodies and um, hospital ER room. I remember I could in one stage only feel my head. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm dying and my mom, what will she do? A lot of things were like splittered into pieces and you couldn't really, it wasn't livable, it wasn't a place that you would find like filled with life like it once was with children playing in the streets and, and grown-ups um, being good neighbors. In 2016, the military almost took over the, the extensive destruction of the forest and the, that brought a lot of confusion. The intention is you cut down the trees so that in the future when people say, no, this is our forest, you take them inside, then they see no trees. So if there are no trees, you can't call it a forest, you know. And that was the height when we were having a campaign against militarization and ethnocide because that was the, the time when indigenous territories are heavily militarized because the military suspected these communities to be supporting the rebels. I knew that it wasn't a home. I was just going to see how it was, you know, so I didn't have any expectations of that being my home anymore. But just to see the devastation was hard. كان كثير صعب قرار اني انا اترك سوريا وما له سهل وما اخذته بارادتي اضطريت اني انا اترك سوريا وانا كنت اول مره بدي اسافر لحالي واول مره بدي اركب طياره <تصفيق> واول مره بروح على مصر طبعا وما كنت بعرف حدا بمصر ابدا ولا مره جربت عيش لحالي كل كل حياتي وانا عايشه ضمن اهلي والعائله عندنا متماسكه كثير فانا ضمن مجتمع عائلي كبير أم ما بقدر احكي عن الخوف اللي كان جواتي انا وبالطياره ما كنت خايفه من الطياره على قد ما انا خايفه من بعدين طيب شو حيصير انا رايحه على مكان جديد تماما ما بعرف اي حدا ما بعرف شي فيه صح انهم بيحكوا عربي بس كمان انا مالي كثير متعوده على اللهجه المصريه كانت مختلفه عني كثير كثير كان الموضوع قاسي وصعب ببدايته I was thinking I was strong but uh, you know I then uh, then being an asylum seeker was totally a challenge and being in a country like challenge over a challenge we, i had du vakna på morgonen du ser att du är vid sidan av ett fjäll och du ska bestiga den fjällen för du ska komma över gränsen där är ett cell du vet inte vad som har skett föräldrarna dina har inte tid till att förklara dig vad är det som egentligen har skett det näste du vet är att Du må bestige det fjellet for å komme over grensen. Og det er det. Jeg har kjøpt en liten telt. Første uke jeg klarte ikke å sove. Jeg var våken hele tiden. Jeg var like meg inne i to sovepose. Jeg prøvde å våke, men hoden kom ikke med meg. Og jeg prøvde en gang til, men det klarte ikke. Det var helt fliser her i halsen eller sånne ting. Men jeg skulle gjøre noe og varme halsen til å, jeg kommer å våken. 
när jag provat att göra det och se på åh jag hanne mina alltså här helt friser jag klarte inte så ta ut hanne mina I was coming to this asylum center it was kind of like feeling like you're not a part of the society like you have to live in a place but the, the rest of the society must be there I don't blame them they also right you know they have to control things so I'm not just like saying why are you keeping us here I know that the time took uh, it, it took time but it took like kind of a lot of time uh, and we lived in a year with no nothing is gonna happen so we were reading about the news of Turkish asylum seekers seekers what's gonna happen for them and some were again some were on our side Så kom jag till demonstration det var 30 40 000. Det är jag är mest social människa på hela jorden. Jag vill träffa alla på en gång. Så går det jag du vet blandar mig alltså bland de här folken och börjar demonstrera och se se det de säger. En person som ropar så säger vi efter. Ingen aning. Jag vet inte det för det helt. Men jag vet jag har en stor aning hur kul det är att vara där. Se vad där bara. Så attackerade säkerhetspolisen och började döda människor och arresterat mig. The, the very uh, decisive moment of the umbrella movement was when uh, the Hong Kong police they decided to throw the first tear gas bomb into the crowds. Uh, and in Zimbabwe, it it was and still is illegal to protest on the streets, picketing and and um, shouting and so forth and marching. And so what we did is that we devised a protest which was a boycott, and we asked people. Well, at least I asked people to stay at home. Sen visste jag att man måste säga ja. Jag har dödat några stycken. Sen släpps jag ut. Och det var första känsla av behov till en demonstration, behov till revolution. Det var känsla av att jag måste, jag behöver frihet. Nu vet vilken frihet vi vi letar efter. Och det var så. I know how you feel. I know it's difficult to fight for freedom in your country. I know that it looks almost impossible. I know it looks like we don't have power. So basically, if you have one image of how things can be sold, then just start working for that. And that will happen. I promise you, that will happen. You just have to maintain that idea in your mind and work every day to make it real. 